Okay, so we're getting back to what we were talking about, the idea of swing and syncopation and um, what's the difference. All right, so let's go back to pre-jazz. Now, this is pretty close to jazz, um, but it's based off of a French form of a mazurka, and it's called ragtime. And this was a music that was um, pretty popular in America before jazz took over. Now, one of the great composers of uh, ragtime was Scott Joplin. And I'm going to play Maple Leaf Rag. It's a great piece everybody knows. And I want you to think about the stuff we heard a couple minutes ago with the New Orleans Brass Band. The idea of the oomp, 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 oomp with a tuba and then the chords in the uh, banjo, you know. Um... Okay, so that's going to be the left hand of the player, yeah, the oompa, which will eventually become stride piano uh, in a jazz field. But at first, anybody that read music that read p and could play the piano could do this. Now, the difference is with ragtime, instead of a melody would go like this, which would be pretty much straight, what Scott would do would be to syncopate his melody. You know, whatever that melody is. So what he's doing is he's putting more rhythmic figures in there that are between the beats, and that's called syncopation, where you're accenting beats that aren't the stronger beats of the measure, like one and three or two and four. But when you start adding eighth notes, one and two and three and four, and now all those eighth notes become stronger, and now we have this kind of syncopated feel, which is very, very cool. So when I play this, let's listen to the original um, Scott Joplin rag. And this is funny. I'll tell you the story about this. So let's see whether I got it. I got it, so let's go back to it, and here we go. And hopefully the sound won't be too loud or whatever, so let's check it out. So you can hear in the right hand, Syncopation. But the left hand is um ba um ba um ba um ba straight ahead rhythms. Now what happens in this piece is this is the piano piece that anybody could buy and take home. Okay, a new section. This is kind of like a French mazurka, and this is uh, what we call rondo form, where this would be the B section. But then there's a go back to the A, and then we go to a C section, another idea. So I'll give you an example of that. We'll let it ring, uh, we'll let it fly a little bit. There's the B section again. But listen to that left hand. Bop, bop, bop. There's no syncopation there. It's all in the right hand. Da, ba, da, ba, da, ba, da, da, ba, da, ba, da, da. Back to the A section. Okay. And this was, this is an example, even though it wasn't jazz yet, but this was a Native American a black composer who was using Western forms but adding his own syncopation. All right, there's the C section. That's a different idea. How about that? Uh, uh, want it, uh. That's syncopation. But see, this is different than what we're going to talk about in a minute called swing. And what I've played for you before with the Saints Go Marching In, that has a swing feel to it. So we'll talk more about that swing in a second. All right, that's pretty cool. Okay. Let's see if, uh, let's see if this actually worked. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> a minute ago, I just said uh, when we were listening to uh, Scott Joplin, I said Native American. Yeah, it's rich. African American. Pardon me for that. Um, and this is what we would consider as pre-jazz. So this with um, 
folk music of the time in the 1800s, work songs, which are slave songs and so forth. We'll talk more about that in another video. Um, ring shouts, all sorts of things that uh, are synonymous with um, the black culture of the times were um, things that set up um, because of the, um, for instance, mostly the rhythmic things, the syncopation of the, the ragtime work songs actually kind of swung. They had those polyrhythms and so forth. And um, uh, the black dances, of course, and then minstrelsy, which we'll talk about too, um, which was, were appropriated by whites. And they became uh, a great form of venture or a great, in a sense, well, um, uh, prolific. Let's forget the great thing called prolific uh, use of minstrelsy as entertainment, which then became vaudeville. Um, so we'll talk about that sort of stuff, but let's get back to the, um, the pre-jazz ragtime. Now the great, the greatest example of, um, showing you swing, the idea of an incense. And I think I talked about it a little bit more where instead of going like this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the second eighth note. I also lowered the seventh to make it swing. I mean, to make it sound more jazzy in a mixolydian mode instead of a major. But now I'm going to do that four beat. I'm going to swing the rhythm instead of this. See, so it's how we play those two eighth notes in each beat. Um, so if we play them as straight, one and two and absolutely equal, that's not swing. So this was the closest we came to swing in Western music was when they would do six eight or like a jig or something, and they would do triplets. Da ba da da ba da da ba da 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 da, and that's cool. But see, swing is not exactly that because we're not doing three; we're doing the first and the third of the three. Boo da do da do da do da. But then what really is swing? And that's why a lot of classical cats can't do it because they don't listen to it. So they don't hear it. Is it where you accent do da, do da, do da, 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 da. You're accenting the weakest of the three notes. One, two, three, the third triplet. And so we do that. See, so I do it naturally because I've done it all my life. Um, cause I've listened to jazz um as much as anybody you know not that i don't write classical music too but jazz is what i feel you know um and you have to feel it you have to know it and you have to know how it goes because you can't put that on the uh, page of music you can put simulate the triplets and so forth but it'll come out like da ba da ba da 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 and so like that doesn't swing all right, but getting back to the basics of, uh, let's listen to it and see uh, what I mean. So when we get to the first era of jazz, the New Orleans period, we're going to get to, um, you know, Louis Armstrong, Sidney Bechet, Jelly Roll Morton, King Oliver. And we're going to stop at Jelly Roll Morton because he did on the piano some really, really cool stuff. He considers himself the originator of jazz. You'll read that in the... Um, in the history of jazz book what he's not i don't know whether he can totally claim that but he is maybe one of the top three in the origination because he wrote out the music and then he took it all over the country and he recorded it and he was a great improviser and a great pianist and he was a great show person too so that he had no trouble going all the way to alaska to play jazz um, but let's get back to, uh, what he did. Now, two things about jazz are swing feel in most cases until we get to fusion and world music, you know, world influence and so forth, but swing feel. And we've kind of talked about that right there. Yeah. And then the other thing would be, um, improvisation. So with the ragtime, there's no improvisation. It's all written out. You can, like I said, you can go buy the sheet music. Any piano student can go by and play the music and it'll sound perfect because 
As Joplin wrote it, syncopated, he didn't swing it. So you don't have to understand the swing concept. Uh, the syncopation will do just fine, right? But it won't swing. And you say, well, what do you mean by that? Well, let's play Scott Joplin playing, um, or we actually did, did play Scott Joplin playing the, um, the rag. And you say, like, wait a minute, if he was doing that in the late 1800s in the first part of the turn of the century, how in the world did we record it? Because recording didn't come in until, like, the, um, the late teens into the 20s in America. All right, well, that... That's an interesting question, because you actually did hear Scott Joplin playing that. Did he live that long? No. What he was doing was recording it on a player piano. Now, a player piano had a piano roll, almost kind of like an early co uh, computer, where as you played, it would pierce the pieces of paper that were going around in a roll and would create, in a sense, a, a, um, a file of openings on the paper that the piano could read and and just like a music box if you're um you know if you open up the music box you see little pins and so forth and as they go they would hit the hit the hit the certain um metal things and that's why i would play those um things early computers used cards that had uh openings in them Okay, so basically that's a player piano. And so in order to play it, all you had to do was pump the piano, if it was a player piano, and it would do it for you. You put the piano roll in on the front of the piano, and it would read it. So you could play classical music, you could play all sorts of styles as long as you had the roll. So that's how we got Scott Joplin. He had recorded the piano, uh, or the uh, Maple Leaf Rag and other rags, on piano rolls, and then they were... Um, reproduced and sent around and that's how we got the first recording all right so that's a long story about something that's really just trivia but it's pretty cool all right um now we don't need p player pianos because you can buy one of those digital pianos that has a whole piano bank of tunes uh computerized inside just hit a button and it'll play litz or chopin or bach and so forth and you can look really cool if you're moving your hands um and nobody's really looking all right Enough, enough, um, small talk, very small talk. All right. So I'm now, I'm going to play, um, a little bit of the Scott Joplin again. Okay. And then I'm going to switch it over to having, um, Jelly Roll play. And then we'll talk about that. All right. So here is, um, Scott again, as soon as I, um, get him back up again. All right, here we go. Ba -ba -da -da -da. See the syncopation? So here it comes, right here. Beautiful. But that's not swing. All right, stop for a second here. Swing would be like this. Bop, bop. Okay. All right. Now you're going to hear that because uh, Jelly Roll Morton's going to do Maple Leaf Rag. And he's going to do it like, okay, I learned the melody. I listened to Scott play it. I might even read the music. But now I'm going to do it my way. So I'm going to improvise. So I'm going to do part of the melody, but then, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm going to start swinging it. That's what I feel, and I'm going to play my own bass line, and so check it out. And this is a great example of the difference between non-swing and swing on the same piece. As he put his own little introduction in there. All right. This is Jelly Roll Morton. <clears throat> There's the B section. Bum, 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 bum. So the more you listen to the Maple Leaf Rag and really learn it, then you'll know exactly what's going on with Jelly Roll as he's reinterpreting it.
Now I'm playing the original one, right? But it's totally different. It's so much different. And he's adding some things and taking some things away. There's the C section. But see, if you were snapping your fingers to this, you definitely want to snap on two and four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. You see, it's not just syncopation, it's swing. Just what I was talking about. Beautiful stuff, okay? So you can hear the difference between the two. Listen once again. Mm. One and two and one and two and. That's as straight as an arrow, but the right hand has that really beautiful syncopation. Okay, it's like so straight, it's like a machine gun. Right, you see so we have this but then when jelly roll morton does it it goes bop, bop. Right, and this is what was happening at the beginning of jazz we were really really identifying with that swing feel and that's the whole ball game right there okay all right